right, we're going straight to these pictures from Nalanda University in the state of Bihar, where the Prime Minister is today. These are live pictures coming in of the inauguration of the new university campus built over uh, 455 acre and at a cost of 1,700 crores. The Prime Minister is inaugurating the new Nalanda University campus near the ancient university ruins in Rajgir. Remember, uh, this project is seeing the involvement of not one but 17 partner countries. The Prime Minister is at the ancient Nalanda site, which, remember, is a UN heritage site. The Governor is there, also Chief Minister Nitish Kumar with him. The new 455-acre campus combines traditional and modern architecture, importantly includes a net zero area. These are pictures of the Prime Minister, in fact, after the inauguration of the new Nalanda University campus. It also, in fact, offers various academic programs and scholarships. This is the Prime Minister's first visit to Bihar after becoming the PM for the third time. The university is set up jointly by India and 17 EAS countries. Head of missions of 17 countries are going to be attending, are in fact attending this event. The university is conceived as a joint collaboration between India and East Asia summit countries. Inauguration ceremony being attended by several eminent people, including the head of missions of 17 countries. You also, in fact, see uh, a minister S. J. Shankar, external affairs minister S. J. Shankar, in these pictures right now. Talking a little about the campus, it has two academic blocks with 40 classrooms having a total seating capacity of around 1900. Aditya Webber has more on that big story, tracking that story from Nalanda in Bihar. Aditya, the inauguration, in fact, is underway. These are pictures coming in from Nalanda University, where External Affairs Minister is also seen, along with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Well, exactly, Seha. Finally, the inauguration is now underway, and that is several top dignitaries, including Indian Prime Minister Narendra Damodar Das Modi, are gracing the occasion. Notable is the fact that the, day, the way things were planned and scheduled Things are moving as per schedule and that we've been given to understand that the no emission uh, infrastructure, extended infrastructure of University of Nalanda is now being inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in presence of top dignitaries Neha. Coming in of the inauguration of the university, it's a 455-acre university campus which has been unveiled today with two auditoriums having a capacity of 300 seats each. Aditya continues to be with us. It also has a student hostel. What's most special about the university is that it is self-sustainable. It's a net zero green campus. Aditya. Well, exactly, Sneha. We have been given to understand that when the entire construction work was being undertaken and the entire plan was being chalked out, so as to what infrastructure will actually symbolize the uh, relics and remains of the Nav Nalanda Mahavihar as it resurrects in form of University of Nalanda in presence of as many as 17 partner countries that have signed memorandums of understanding pertaining to different aspects of academics. But then notable is the fact that the entire infrastructure that has been created for this extended uh, university has ensured zero emission as far as power consumption and other consumptions are concerned. On your screen, pictures of the inauguration of the new Nalanda University. Aditya also telling us about the fact that it is a self-sustainable university with a solar plant, domestic and drinking water treatment plant, water recycling. Aditya, the new university also, you know, offering opportunities to those not just in India, but even outside of India, just like the old campus did 1,600 years ago, ever since, of course, since 2016, it has been declared a UN heritage site, isn't it? Well, exactly, Sneha. Yes. Of course, the entire relics and the remains of ancient University of Nalanda has been declared a heritage site by the United Nations. But then notable is the fact that the entire thing that has been planned with respect to the University of Nalanda 
is something that aspires to regain the same lost old glory of University of Nalanda. And perhaps this is the reason why government of Bihar actually tried to rope in more countries that had the ancient ties and from where students were known to have come to India in their search and quest for knowledge, Neha. That's right. Be with us, in fact, Aditya, to tell, us, uh, tell our viewers right now that it is, in fact, a project worth 1,700 crores. And it's, in fact, in, in collaboration with other countries as well. This includes 17 countries of uh, the EAS group. In that sense, Aditya, it's also a major soft power push when it comes to the country, when it comes to India, isn't it? Well, exactly, Sneha. If at all we consider the geopolitical significance of University of Nalanda and the way its new uh, revamped infrastructure is now being launched in presence of top dignitaries of India and abroad, it is, of course, you can clearly understand that the entire paraphernalia aspires at reclaiming the lost glory of Nalanda as a seat, historic seat of knowledge from uh, where actually people came and assembled from different cultures and traditions and quench their quest for knowledge. Interesting to note here is the fact that the way memorandums of understanding have been chalked out between different countries, we have been given to understand that there are as many as 17 countries that have already inked MOUs with the uh, authorities of the university and that there are several other countries also, even from the West, that are now expressing their interest to collaborate and join as far as University of Nalanda is concerned. And of course, after the major software push during the COVID-19 pandemic wherein India helped the other countries with me medicines and other essential supplies uh, besides the vaccine. Now the University of Nalanda will be a major software push as far as India's standing in the geopolitical scenario is concerned. Sneha. Which is in fact of the Prime Minister inaugurating the university along with Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, External Affairs Minister, S.J. Shankar also seen in these pictures, the Prime Minister in Bihar today. This, remember, is the first visit of the Prime Minister after becoming the PM for the third time, inaugurating the new campus of the Nalanda University in Rajgir. University was set up jointly by India and EAS countries. So essentially, Aditya heads of missions of 17 countries are in fact a part of this big event. Talk to us about which countries are these. Well, exactly, Sneha. We've been given to understand that major South Asian countries, including China, Thailand, Vietnam, and Laos, are major partners and constituents of this Nalanda University. And that apart, several Western nations, including Canada, have also signed their memorandum of understanding for this particular university. Notable is the fact that the way things have been talked out for this particular university ever since its inception by Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, who took very uh, active role as far as the resurrection of uh, University of Nalanda, or you can say resurrection of Nalanda Mahavihar that used to be centuries back into University of Nalanda. We've been given to understand that several measures were taken to ensure that the best in class of the academics actually arrives and is available for students in University of Nalanda Sneha. The university conceived as a joint collaboration between India and East Asia summit countries, about 17 countries that are involved in this. And in fact, uh, representatives from these countries are also part of this big event today. Inauguration ceremony being attended by several eminent people, including the head of missions of 17 countries like Aditya was telling us about. Aditya, take us to, in fact, the campus. Uh, it has, I understand, two academic blocks, 40 classrooms. How many students can it accommodate? What are the courses that will be offered? Tell us more. Well, exactly, Sneha. As far as University of Nalanda is concerned, we have been given to understand that the university offers as many as 137 scholarships to international school students comprising six schools, the School of Buddhist Studies, Philosophy, Comparative Religion, Historical Studies, Ecology, Environmental Studies, Sustainable Development and Management. Notable is the fact that international students 
enroll in postgraduate programs for the academic years of 2022 to 2024 and 2023 to 2025 and the phd program for 2023 to 27 comes from a diverse array of countries including argentina bangladesh bhutan cambodia ghana indonesia kenya laos liberia Myanmar, Mozambique, Nepal, Nigeria, Republic of Congo, South Sudan, Sri Lanka, Serbia, Sierra Leone, Thailand, Turkey, Uganda, USA, Vietnam, and Zimbabwe. So you can understand what sort of variety is what is being now offered by University of Nalanda and which this extended campus and developed and revamped infrastructure. Perhaps the university would aspire offering more courses, more scholarships, and more academic facilities to the students from India and abroad on the new campus, Neha. Pictures on your screen are in fact from Nalanda University in Bihar. This is in Rajgir where the Prime Minister has inaugurated the new university campus today, built at the cost of 1,700 crores, a capacity of 300 seats each as far as the two auditoriums are concerned, a student hostel as well, with a capacity of around 550 students. So tell our viewers, uh, this, in fact, is in the same site as the ancient ruins of the previous university, built so hundreds of years, of, of years ago, in fact, stands. In the year 2016, the United Nations had declared the old university ruins as a UN heritage site. Apart from that, there are various facilities as well. Importantly, Aditya, that includes an international center, an amphitheater as well, to accommodate up to 2,000 individuals. I'm thinking that people, in fact, students from all across the world will be encouraged to be a part of this university, isn't it? Well, exactly, Sneha. As far as the, the entire project and the setup of the University of Nalanda is concerned, of course, the entire campus offers various facilities, including amphitheater and facility club, and also the campus is, is the next zero green campus designed to be self-sustaining with solar power installation and domestic and drinking water treatment facilities. So you can clearly understand that the entire infrastructure has been uh, planned and constructed like a best-in-class project so as to ensure the best-in-class facilities are available to the students from India and abroad who come down to University of Nalanda in search of knowledge. And of course, uh, the University of Nalanda with this extended infrastructure aspires as, as flexing its muscles as a new academic center, giving a fresh impetus on education. Sneha. The Prime Minister inaugurating the Nalanda University campus. Pictures are in fact from the dais with the Prime Minister along with other dignitaries. Uh, the Bihar Chief Minister, External Affairs Minister. Also, we understand that in this event there are 17 countries that are being represented. Given that this is a, in joint collaboration with the EAS countries, pictures are from the event today. Remember, it is in fact a university with net zero green campus, a self-sustainable university with solar plant, domestic and drinking water treatment, a major soft power push from India as well when it comes to the new Nalanda University. Listening to what the External Affairs Minister is saying right now, let's go straight to these developments. Ji, Sri Shravan Kumar Ji, Members of Parliament, Sri Vivek Thakur Ji, Sri Kaushendra Kumar Ji, Chancellor Professor Arvind Panagariya Ji, Vice Chancellor Abhay Kumar Singh Ji, Excellencies. It India's vision and position. The university has a deep connection with history. The original Nalanda University established around 1,600 years ago, considered to be amongst the first residential universities of the world. In 2016, the ruins of the Nalanda was declared, and rightly so, as a UN heritage site. Ancient Nalanda University for eight centuries as a center of knowledge and wisdom. It also served a larger role by connecting our society with those of our near and far neighbors through land and sea. The exchanges that it fostered enriched our entire continent. The university's destruction marked a downturn in our history, and that dark phase continued through the colonial period. In that era, 
we not only saw a decline in our capabilities and confidence, but in our connectivity as well with those nations who are now members of the East Asia Summit. In the rebuilding of the Nalanda University, there are multiple messages, both national and international. Friends, today we are here to witness the revival of a global bridge of learning that can build relationships even further than in the past. Education, training, and capacity building are the most effective ways of promoting international understanding. This is a particular commitment that we all must have towards the Global South. I am especially glad to note that Nalanda University is already working both in India and ASEAN member states towards creating an ASEAN India University network. The schools and centers of this university have also been consciously chosen to highlight the purpose of this university. It is a matter of satisfaction that the student community is drawn from so many nations and regions of the world. Friends, the occasion today is obviously a notable one for higher learning in India. It also marks the realization of a long-standing commitment by India to the East Asia Summit grouping. It reflects the seriousness with which we pursue our Act East policy. But most of all, it underlines Bharat's endeavor to emerge as a Vishwabandhu, extending the hands of friendship and cooperation to the international community. By doing so, by doing so, we contribute to the rejuvenation of civilizational linkages, to the celebration of our shared cultural heritage, and to the appreciation of the immense diversity of our existence. I thank you for your attention. बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद डॉक्टर सुब्रमण्यम जयशंकर जी भारत के माननीय विदेश मंत्री आपका बहुत आपके प्रेरणादायक शब्दों के लिए आपका बहुत बहुत आभार